I request uh, Dr. Vijay to introduce our next speaker, Professor Graham Dixon. Ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, indeed a proud privilege for me to uh, again introduce a good friend of mine, I can say at this stage, and the guest of honor today, Dr. Graham Dixon. Dr. Graham Dixon is a professor emeritus of leadership studies at Royal Roads University in Canada. Dr. Dixon is the recipient of 2020's Distinguished Leadership Award from the Canadian College of Health Leaders. Graham is the principal in Leeds Global, a not-for-profit enterprise that works closely with many other organizations to enable countries outside of Canada to use Leeds for leadership development. In the spring of 2020, he published as a co-author with Bill Thal, a second edition of Leeds book, Bringing Leadership to Life in Health, Leads in a Caring Environment, Putting Leads to Work. The second edition of the Leeds book uses current research to explain the framework and has over 36 stories about how it has been put to work in a multiplicity of jurisdictions. We are looking forward to your address, Dr. Graham Dixon, and to a long association with Global uh, Leeds Global Canada and Canada India Network Society. Over to you, uh, Dr. Graham Dixon. Uh, thank you very much, uh, VJ. And uh, I am going to use some slides in my presentation uh, this morning but only because I want to visually emphasize some very important points that I, that I would like to make. I mean, my, my job this morning, I think primarily is to introduce the Redesigning Leadership with Leads program, Become the Leader You Aspire to Be, that we have developed, we being myself and my colleagues at Leads Global, uh, Dr. Aaron Garg at the Canada India Network Society and Vijay and his team at CAHO to bring leadership to life, if you like, in a more structured way than maybe most of us uh, would think that it could be. And I must say, uh, before I begin my formal remarks and my, use my slides, I listened very, very carefully uh, to the people who spoke uh, in the realm of human resources uh, a few moments ago, and certainly very closely to Dr. Peter Lackman. And I heard things like, as leaders, we are the people who take care of the people. That is a responsibility that we as leaders must assume. Uh, I heard that we must practice what you preach. And it is fundamentally important that leaders model what they expect of others, and they must practice what they preach. I heard from Dr. Peter Lackman a number of values and attributes of leadership that I learned from him yet again how important it is to give some substance to the concept of leadership. And I would ask you, all of you, as I say a few words about the leadership architecture that underpins the Redesigning Leadership with Leads program, to explore the degree to which Dr. Lackman's notions, values, and attributes of leadership are implicit in the Leads framework. I mean, I saw many of them there, and I think you will too. Uh, the last 20 years, um, I have been captured by what leadership is, uh, partly because to me, it's an exciting and fundamental element of the human condition. How we relate to one another as leader follower, makes all the difference in the world as to whether we work together in a co-productive way, as Dr. Lackman said. And if we don't get leadership right, then we cannot work together. 
And I don't mean leadership in the sense of I'm the boss and you do what I say. I mean leadership in the sense of developing a, a relationship between two people where at the moment, in one moment, one might lead because it's important that they give guidance to that co-production. And in the next moment, the other person might lead and the formal leader might have to step into a followership role. And when I say I'm fascinated by leadership, a conversation I had with my university president 15 years ago has stuck with me forever and actually motivated me to do the work I'm doing. And we were talking about the future of Royal Roads University. And as we were walking outside in the beautiful gardens of Royal Roads, he stopped immediately in the garden and he said, you know, what this university needs is more leadership. And he was very, very firm about that. And then he said, but leadership, what is it? He says, to me, it's like fog. You can see it and you can feel it, but you can't grab a hold of it. And I realized at that time that if you're going to help people develop leadership, you must give it substance and form. Not so much substance and form that it becomes prescriptive, but enough substance and form so that people know the territory that defines the difference between leadership, between leadership and management, between leadership and human resource development. It is a special role and function. And that's what led us to the work that has created the LEADS framework, which is the foundation of the Redesigning Leadership with LEADS program. That here's the, the book that underpins this program, and the book tries to bring together the research that validates the framework called LEADS, which, as Dr. Uh, Agarwal has said, is an architecture that really defines the territory of leadership, where you go when you lead. It's kind of like looking at a map of the world and saying, well, where is India? And you have to find India on the map of the world. And if you go though to India, you only experience it when you interact with the people. So whereas an architecture like Leeds can say, this is the territory of leadership, you really only experience leadership when you interact with the real people in your organization and in the world around you. And in doing so, you should be guided by an architecture that says, these are the practices and the principles of how you should interact with people in those jurisdictions. In our world, and the, by the way, the reason the framework came to life in British Columbia, where I work, and then across Canada, where it is now endorsed by many 40 uh, professional and health authorities across Canada as the common vocabulary of leadership. What we discovered was, if you take that co-production notion that Peter Lackman talked about and the systems thinking notion that Dr. Lackman talked about, if we're all in a system, if we're all part of a whole, then maybe we should have a common vocabulary that talks to us about what good leadership looks like. Because then maybe together we can create the leadership culture and practices that are necessary. But to us, it wasn't just important to define what the architecture of leadership is. It was also important to understand the function of leadership. And what Dr. Lackman has has pointed those functions out and many of your speakers have pointed certainly some of those functions. The first, and my, co my colleague, Dr. Aaron Garg believes passionately in this notion, is the importance of integrating parts of a whole, of overcoming the natural fragmentation that often happens in a system when people indulge their uniqueness 
as opposed to seeing that they're part of a system to serve a patient or a family. The second function of leadership is to create healthy workplaces. And this whole conference has been about dedicating time, energy, and resources to ensuring that the people who care for the people, the system is to care for, are healthy and empowered and enabled to carry out that caring and compassionate function. And I can tell you that in, in Canada right now, I, I can't speak for India, uh, but in Canada right now, I have deep, deep concerns about the ability of our healthcare clinical workforce and broader workforce to sustain the energy and commitment that they have given to this point in dealing with COVID. And I think we're going to have a huge problem six months, a year from now, as people just begin to, they already have, but continue to maybe abandon a, a calling that has been so important to them because we haven't given them the support they need. And of course, the third function of leadership is to facilitate system change. Change is all around us. Pandemic has engendered it. We're seeing innovation and change at a pace that we've never seen before. And leadership's job, as opposed to management, which is to bring stability, is truly to generate change. So to that end, uh, to define the territory of leadership, but not to give it so much substance that each individual, each organization, each enterprise can discover the uniqueness of it within the context in which they work. We did research. We talked to people across the country of Canada. We, we The book uh, profiles over 600 references where we have looked at the research around leadership worldwide. And we said there's really five buckets of activity that define what a leader does, a good leader does. And the first bucket of activity is called lead self. And a number of the attributes that Dr. Lachman spoke to uh, reflect the lead self domain, the humility notion, the courage notion, the personal transparency notion, are all would fit under the dimension, the domain of lead self. Uh, the second domain of leads is engage others. Goes without saying that you can't lead if people aren't going to follow. And that means the word engagement shows that it's also a relationship, a mutually respectful relationship that binds two people together. Third goal of leadership, and, and this is an attribute of the framework that actually causes a lot of dialogue and discussion because it's contrary in some minds to the relationship focus of the rest of the framework. It is the domain of achieved results. And it's predicated on the notion that when we work in a health system that's publicly funded or that people pay us to serve them, then we need to achieve results, results in the form of improved patient care improve quality, uh, improve family and, and community care. And if we're not driven as leaders by a notion of that's our job is to get results, then we can't be effective. The fourth domain of leads is develop coalitions. And this suggests that in a system, no one organization exists as an island any more than an individual does that coalitions have to be built across regions, across communities, with communities, between hospitals, and in our country, primary care, between governments and service departments and, and delivery systems. And the final domain of leads is what we called systems transformation. We would have liked to say transform systems, but we couldn't then have the acronym LEAD, so we turned it around a little. But it's that whole notion that leaders are part of a co-productive whole. And co-production, what we call co-creation in the chapter on systems transformation, is the hallmark of what a leader needs to develop that ability 
to collectively work with others to create the change that we need in society to bring healthcare, evolve it into the future in the way it needs to evolve. So I'm going to stop there on the LEADS framework and say that the, uh, the redesigning leadership with LEADS program, become the leader you aspire to be, is predicated on the notion that you may not be able to teach leadership, as one pundit said, but it certainly can be learned. And the person who learns it is the leader who wants to learn it. The whole premise of the program, that is that it's self-directed, that the individual leader to actually realize their potential needs to take ownership of their own development. They need to learn another one of Dr. Lackman's major attributes of good leadership. And they need to therefore self-direct their learning. So the leadership uh, program that we're developing here puts the onus on the learner to use a series of micro modules that have been designed by a team, including a number of people from CAHO and from Canada, an hour to two hours in length. That They pick and choose when and where they're gonna do them. And they're expected to use their workplace as the focal point of thinking about leadership. They're going to be supported by a number of mentors and guides that CAHO is going to provide so that we can create the transparency around leadership that is so important, that we can talk about the people in the Indian society about what leadership looks to them in the context of India, not in the context of Canada. And so that relationship between the mentor and the learner is going to be established. And we think over time, many of you on this call may step into that mentor role. And I'm going to stop there because um, I'm excited that we're finally launching this program in partnership with CAHO and the Canada India Network Society. And I do hope that some of you will see this program as a unique and very different way to approach the opportunity of a person to learn leadership by directing themselves through a challenging process. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Graham Dixon, for introducing us to LEADS. Uh, I feel many of us, uh, many of the delegates have been, uh, have been very much inspired and will take up the LEADS course and become the leader they aspire to be.